Yep. How about that? Better or worse? Mm, equal. Lateral. <laughs> All right. Start recording. I'm uh, going to start the song. Do it. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we can't hear it. So who do we think? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, are you playing in the song? Because I don't hear a song. Can you hear it? Nope. God damn it. Am I not sharing with audio? Oh, hold on. Here we go. One more. Got it? There we go. Okay. All right. Behind the screen, there's a world of pure imagination. Behind the screen, there's a world built right. for you and oh, me. No more sharing. So uh, here's, the, here's the question. Let's put down bets. Who do we think is going to show up first? Our guest, Susie, or our regular, Brian? <laughs> Who do we think is going to be closer to being on time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, Susie. All right. Jim? Oh, yeah. I said Susie for sure. Okay. So, uh, hey, everybody. This is the Paul Goble Show. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, Paul Goble. Uh, joining me, as always, is my best friend, Jim Bruce. Hey, everybody. And uh, joining him is his friend, Tom Griffin. Hi. And Tom is all, oh, just in time. Hey, and here's our guest, Susie Nakamura. Hey, Susie, how you doing? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. I certainly can. All right, all right. Hey, guys. Thank you for, you. Being, thank you for being on the show, Susie. Uh, we were just discussing how Brian, who is the fourth member of the show, uh, is not here. And there's a chance that he uh, has passed out from too much drinking. So, or I'm replacing uh, him. I'm, <laughs> so this well, is the way that he finds out that he's fired, <laughs> and he is no longer needed because well, I am here. I mean, that would be great if you could replace him. Unfortunately, Brian's role on the show is to drink a lot and be annoying. Can yeah. you do that? Oh, shit. I mean, I have green. T I just have green tea. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you're in Brian's uh, up on Brian's level. Gonna have to juice frankly. up that tea, Susie. Gonna have to juice that up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, just FYI, Susie, we are uh, we are streaming this on Twitch. So uh, everybody uh, uh, who wants to watch our strip, our right now, rather, yeah, they can watch it live uh, on Twitch if they want. Where is That's it? fun. There are you is. recording yeah. it too? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're letting you know just because now instead of reaching like you know, later three people, be like nine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's uh, so people can watch this live on Twitch right now if they want to, uh, and then they'll I listen to I it later. I wish I knew this. I would. I wish I knew this. Well, you, sir, Jim Bruce is not good. <laughs> but you're not gonna look. The thing is, the later on when people listen to this or watch the video, it will be the exact same thing they're seeing now. I know, so. but people like to be a part of appointment podcast. Oh, yes, you're right. Jim is uh, the only, Jim is probably worse producer than me, which is saying something. But yeah, this was a, a last minute thing. So uh, unfortunately, so, uh, yeah, we were uh, but we got, we got two people watching this stream. So uh, we're still waiting for Brian. Let's get right to it. Now, uh, people might say to themselves, and I'm sure they have all said it already. How did these dummies get Susie Nakamura on their show? Uh, and uh, as it, it's not as hard as you might think it is. Not that Susie isn't great and busy, but she's super nice and she's always willing to help out her old friends. And oddly enough, uh, she's worked with Jim, Tom, and me all on different projects. Uh, why don't you guys talk about the movie that you guys made together? Because I was not involved in that. All right, well, okay. So I just preface this by saying that this particular project you can still watch on YouTube. And I directed it, and weirdly enough, I've never directed again. <laughs> <laughs> but Susie was so great in it, uh, and it is called Rock, Paper, Scissors, Honor of the Hand. And it's, uh, it's uh, it basically a, like a karate movie of a guy, you know, it's fighting. Kumite. To, kumite, sorry. But uh, it's, hand, it's rock, paper, scissors is what they're competing in. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. Susie play, and Brian is the lead. And Susie plays his long-suffering wife. So 
I well, guess the first question is, was that the biggest acting of your career, pretending that you were attracted to Brian? <laughs> no, no, but I do. One of my favorite bits ever is from that uh, short or pro that from that project. Oh, well, we all we all want to hear which one it is so we can know who wrote it. Um, well, I mean, I, I want to make sure I'm not spo I'm not spoiling anything. It's not like a surprise, but they, you know, they they see there they, there's like a competition of secret. There's a secret competition of underground fighters, right? And they go to they go to the arena to fight, and there's a sign that says "Welcome, secret underground fighters." <laughs> yes. That's my favorite part too. Yeah, yeah, that may be the funniest joke in the whole thing, actually, because it happens early on, so it and sets the so tone. I remember that. I'm like, that is a solid, simple, simple joke. That's and good I, stuff. And I don't, how, how many years ago was that, Jim? Oh, my God. Oh. I'm going to say 10? Maybe. Oh, I still more. remember that. I still remember that joke. joke. Yeah, it has to be it more than maybe, 10 years. Maybe 2004? Do you remember your character's name? <laughs> No, because like you, I did no research for today. <laughs> yeah, and why, why the fuck would you? But why would you? Your name was Ariel, and uh, which I'm sure I heard in a video game. Every name in there is just a name I could remember when we wrote it. So, yeah, there's a lot of good jokes. Tom's one of my favorite, very manly part Tom played. I think Tom is brilliant in that. And then you and Brian, I like Brian looking at you as if he's never seen a human girl before. <laughs> you had to dig deep for that. It's so funny because there's this cut of you reacting a little demure, like you're doing this thing, uh, acting, that's what you're doing. You do this very demure turn of your eyes and Brian goes. <laughs> and it's so funny. It's a different style, a different, a different style. If we had a better director, uh, they, he would have been able to merge those styles. True, yeah, maybe it wasn't so much Brian's acting skill. Maybe he was taking, maybe he was told to do that by the director, because well, you have a fond memory of that, clearly. The problem is no one else in the world was available, so I had to. <laughs> that project actually cost me money because I went to go buy a, a fake ponytail. Oh. And it was like, I'm, whatever. It was like. Wow. You lost whatever. money on that deal. So it was like a fake. So I made like a, a real ponytail with my hair. And then I, I tied the fake ponytail. That's why it's so like, it's a crazy long hair piece, right? Oh. Yeah. 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 So I had to like put it onto my own hair. And then I think I, my, my movement was restricted because I was afraid it was going to fall off. <laughs> Now, our friend Tim Bennett was also in this, and it's worth looking up Tim Bennett's YouTube because he put together the tiniest clip, but he re-edited the fight. So imagine somebody who knew how to edit did it, and it's really good because he basically was like, well, Jim's stupid. There's not enough coverage, so I'll make it like a video game. So he does these video game cry runs, and it works really well. So you should check it out just for yourself as Why well. Why haven't I seen this? Uh, because none of us know how to tell anybody what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know that existed. Neither did I. Uh, oh, so God. There you go. I uh, did it by accident. Tim didn't tell me. So I think these, I think Tim is like, well, I want to let Jim know, but I also don't want Jim to have my new phone number. <laughs> yeah. That's probably it. He's going to find me in the woods wherever I live now. Yeah, Tim's a little uh, off the grid, as they say. Yeah, very much so. Um, but uh, uh, so that was a great thing. And I think at the time we were all like, wow, that was very cool of, uh, of Susie to do that. So um, I, you know, I think I speak for all of us when I say, wow, that was pretty cool of you to be involved and, and help glad, everybody out with that. I'm glad to hear you had at least fun that day and got to buy a ponytail. So I'm glad. Yeah, that, um, <laughs> yeah it was you, fun. You it, got to. Yeah, if it's fun, then it's not like, it's less of a favor. Like, I wanted to do it. I mean, if you, have you ever heard of the five questions? The oh. five questions are something you ask yourself 
to, to, you know, to take a job, basically. I and, don't. Tell me what they are. Okay, so you have to answer a resounding three to, to, to take the job. So one is, will I have fun? So let's, let's do rock, paper, scissors. Will I have fun? <laughs> yes. All right. Will I like the people? Yes. Yay. Will I make money? No. Mm, no, <laughs> definitely not. Will I grow as an artist? N no. <laughs> not so much. Will it advance my career? No. Definitely not. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I got no, it. but it, but it was still fun. Like you don't, like you still want to do. You still want to have fun. Like, yeah. And it was, and it definitely was fun because the stakes. That's the thing. When the stakes are so low, and I do this, I've discovered this in my later on career, basically my retired career. When people ask you to do things that you're not getting paid for, it's very freeing in terms of creativity. <laughs> because you're going to do literally whatever you want. Because if they come and complain, you go, uh, you got what you paid for, sucker. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter at that point. So it's really a trade-off when you say, no, I'm not getting paid. The other side is almost always, but it's going to be fun because I'm just going to fuck around and do what I want. And I'll, yeah. tell, I'll tell you a little bit, a little secret about Paul. Back when he was getting paid, he also did that, which is why he's retired. <laughs> Still, yep, every day. Now, uh, now, uh, for those of you who are listening and watching this, uh, whether live or not, you, of course, uh, have to be familiar with Susie only because she has worked for so long. Now, uh, you might not know this, Susie, or you might not remember, but Jim and I went to college with Peter Marietta, uh, who I know is an old friend of yours because you guys were in the touring company at Second City together. Yes. Isn't that how I met you? Through Peter or through... Tim. I believe so. I think it was through Peter back then, back in Chicago. Because I know for me, the first time I ever saw you perform was in that touring company. And uh, <laughs> you guys did that racism sketch. That was one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen. Uh, and I remember afterwards, Pete was like, yeah, we wrote that. Isn't that hilarious? And I was just like, God damn it, you guys. Because I don't know if that made it into other touring companies, but holy fuck, was that funny. Um, I but do then, that. But, the, but since then, of course, you know, uh, you've worked steadily and, and uh, not, uh, not the least of which is, the, is currently uh, you're on HBO on Avenue 5. Um, and, uh, and when I told my wife, hey, Jim got Susie to do the show, she was like, oh, is he going to talk to her about working with Hugh Laurie? And I said, <laughs> you might as well ask if Jim is going to breathe air. <laughs> oh my God, I'll tell you, I'm such a big Hugh Laurie fan that for a little while I got addicted to Vicodin. <laughs> just to be like him uh -huh. now, but that's a great show and i'm sure you've heard a lot of good things from people who have, who have seen it and how great you are on it but my speaking for myself i know there's a lot of like technical shit in that show that goes on that the audience will never see in a million years is this the most like craziest special effects technical show thing you've ever worked on uh, I'm, I'm going to say yes, only because I haven't done a lot of technical stuff, you know, like I'm, I, I don't, I don't think I've even done a science fiction thing before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're pretty, all the, pretty much, you're like the grounded lady in, in stuff. Yeah, you're I not, mean, I've worked <laughs> with special effects before, but it's a lot of practical stuff. Like I've had a fake uh, pregnant belly. I've had a mm. fake uh, sign impaled into my shoulder, but you know, but it's like something that I actually wore. But the truth is when we shoot on that spaceship set, we, you know, like we're, we're rarely doing anything on green screen or stunts, you know, we, well, well, I take that back. We had a big stunt day, but I mean, for us actors, it's sort of like we just do the scene and then we leave. Right, and the stuntmen do all the work. Yeah. Just do everything. Well, yeah, so that's, I think that's the question. So when you're walking through the corridors and stuff like that, those are all practical built sets. Yes. Practical. Oh, that's fucking cool. Dude, wow. dude, it is that big. That's and amazing. Mul multiple floors. The elevator is real. Wow. And I had no, that's so fucking cool. I was what? struck by that when, when watching it. I was thinking these sets look, some of these sets look huge. Yeah. And it is for real. That's so fucking cool. The only no. thing that is like not there really is in the, 
in the observation area, um, there's, there's only two floors. And so I think they digitally added maybe a couple other floors, but there's still two floors. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty great. Yeah, that is extremely rare. Like, I don't know if you guys remember um, on Third Rock from the Sun, they lived in the attic. And of course, you could always see them coming up from the attic. Well, of course, that's a state. That's a sound stage. So when you go down those stairs, you're in a hole. There's nothing yeah. there. <laughs> and so at the beginning, before they shoot any scenes in the attic on Third Rock, everybody has to walk down into that hole <laughs> and then come back up. And that's fucking crazy. So to build uh, a two floors, that's pretty fucking amazing. Now, yeah. obviously, all the stuff that's outside is all is all added later on. Yeah. And, I, and, and you had that big episode where. Uh, everybody kept jumping out of the ship, in insisting that it was fake and freezing immediately. Oh, Tell me how crazy that was. I think the craziest feeling that I had was at the table read when we were reading, you know, and it says <laughs> right. the stage directions, and then so and so jumps out, immediately freezes, his hand breaks off, you know. <laughs> like, is this, is this, are we really shooting this? That's hilarious. <laughs> Let me, and oh, yeah. Look, I think it, that scene because there were so many people and so many moving parts. And then we did have stunt people because we were doing a lot of pushing and stuff. That took- Right, that was a big day. crowd. There's a million people there too. Yeah, it was, that was definitely more than a day. But, uh, and we had to do it in pieces, you know, because it's, um, you, because that's the, the, the setback of such a big space, even though it sort of lends to the 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 scope of the show when you're shooting it it's really hard to to make sure the audience knows what's happening yes right because yeah there it's so big it's so There's, big is this character coming from the right is this character coming from the left how do they meet where did they come from <laughs> so you know and then but and once we got into the airlock it's just this crowd scene you have to remember you know who you're scrunched up next to and, and that kind of stuff but it now, was super fun. It's, it, it looks like a blast. The whole show looks like a blast to shoot. Now, uh, as an actor, we all, uh, you, you are, know this more than anyone else. Many times you will be on a show or uh, a project that you think, oh, this might be good for a year or two, or this might work out. And then it doesn't or, or whatever. But in this, going into this, I'm sure you had an idea that this would probably be something that was probably checked all five boxes. <laughs> it answered every five questions with a yes, I'm assuming. It was, it was, it might be the first five yes sir of my entire life. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Can I jump uh, in? Go ahead, Jim. So this was the thing that made me fall in love with the show right away. And I wanted to see if you get this impression of tone. There's a lot of shows that are satirical of sci-fi, like Galaxy Quest or, you know, Spaceballs or whatever. And those are make, making fun of a certain kind of sci-fi or satirizing it. This feels like it's a serious satirization of 2001. Of, <laughs> oh, you mean the movie? Of that kind of a, that genre of uh, futurism, of imagining a true future. Yeah. And it feels bleak and gorgeous to me. Is that what you liked or what, what were your thoughts when you got it? Uh, what I liked about it was that instead of it being sort of a comedy about space, it was a comedy about uh, people and how they would react in an extreme situation, which would really only be possible if it was set in sort of this unreal world, right? Or this world that doesn't exist yet, or this, you know. Yeah. Future. And it's, and it's, I find it, that's, it's very much like Veep in that way that, while Veep is obviously all about politics and whatever, none of those people would be acting the way they were if they weren't in these specific situations. Right, right. and the stakes, right? Exactly. The stakes are higher because of you know who they are and where they work. And I think that's the same for us. Yeah. Um, and I like that it's not 200 years in the future. <laughs> right. 40 years in the future, which means things are kind of the same. And I, Armando, we were doing a, a, a Q and A, and he said, you know, when you think about 1980, things weren't that much different, <laughs> except right. now we have Wi-Fi and the cars look a little different. But there's no, there's no like rocket 
you know, backpacks and stuff like that. And so we aren't, we aren't all wearing silver jumpsuits with boots and bald heads. Right. <laughs> yes. And so that's sort of, it grounds what we're doing a little bit in reality where it's just like, it's, it's in the near future. One of my favorite little constant jokes is when periodically a character references politics that apparently are going on and you're like, so what, there's two presidents? And it's just little <laughs> things like that. Brilliant because they don't tell you everything. They just let yeah. you know things have gotten kind of fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all thrown away. It's in the background. Like maybe yeah. a newscaster says it in passing. Um, yeah. I and uh, and, and, oh, go and ahead. Soci societal things too. Like uh, obviously marriages between three people are perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. It's perfectly it's legal. Awful. And and stuff like that 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 is almost glossed over. So you have to you, if you're not paying attention, you're like, wait a minute, is he married to both those people? What did I miss here? So a yeah, yeah, thruple exactly, a legal thruple. And of uh, course, that, that's all pretty great. And of course, how do you like working with Hugh Laurie? <laughs> <laughs> he is he he is a dream. He is a dream, and and he. You know, he does a lot of the heavy lifting. He plays the captain, but he's also like, uh, I mean, we jokingly call him Cap, Cap, sometimes on our, we have a <laughs> Avenue 5 text thread. But I, I, do, I do think that the cast looks to him for uh, guide, not guidance, but you know, like he, he really is sort of the, the leader of this ensemble. And that, that's natural. I mean, it's he's, natural, but he's like, he sets the tone. He is extremely talented. Yeah. He comes prepared. He's professional. He's warm. He's funny. He's collaborative. He's, I mean, it's just, it, I can't say enough nice about, uh, nice things about him. And, and he, he's, he's one of those guys. And I think Americans only know him from house, right? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. But when you see him do comedy and you see him working you realize, okay, he's he's one of us. Like this is where he comes from. He comes from sketch. He comes right, from comedy. Yeah. And when you fuck around with him, like he's in it, like right away. Yeah, it's smart and fast and funny. Yes. Not like not like uh, you know. We've all seen that person who tries to catch up when you're ripping and wants to be on board. And you're like, well, we're gonna be nice to you because we don't want to make fun of you like we should. But but it's it's nice when somebody is fucking right on it, and you're like, oh my god, I got. Yes, and you get you you could tell right away, like, oh, okay, he's one of us. <laughs> yeah. And I don't get, That's I don't that. feel that with most people. No, I think I think well, I mean, I you and I, I think we can all agree that for the most part, actors are fucking idiots, uh, especially not, the real. Not, we're not smart people, Paul. Yeah, especially the real famous and really good ones, because they're really good at being told what to do and. And if you're good looking and tall and all that shit, it's even better. But yeah, so they're not, it's not pleasant for the most part to be around a bunch of actors. So it's fun, it's, it's fun when, uh, especially the guy at the top is, uh, is good like that. Because yeah. as, as Chris Pratt would, I always bring this up, Chris Pratt once said about Parks and Rec, it all trickles down. Whoever is at the top, if they're cool and fun, it all mm -hmm. trickles down and everybody enjoys it. And um, that's said for Hugh Laurie and Armando Iannucci. Yes, right? And I would imagine all, all his shows are like that. You got a guy like Peter Capaldi or someone awesome like Julie Louis-Dreyfus as the top of your show, and everybody is good for every day they show up. Uh, that's, that's a good way to run your business, I think. Let's talk about another awesome show you were on. Tacoma FD <laughs> is funny as shit. I've watched every episode. And for those of you who don't know, it's basically – super troopers but they're firemen and it's fucking hysterical in it's, tacoma uh, washington where, the, where it's right. raining all the time so they're not they're not really spending most of their time fighting fires yeah so it's a fireman show and the great thing is if you know anything about firemen they do spend a lot of time just sitting around because yeah. many times like if like in the winter time it's a lot of times it's the rescue squad that goes but of course in tacoma there's very few fires so uh, they just sit around and fuck around a lot, and they, so one, once in a while they'll go rescue somebody. But it's Kevin Heffernan and Steve Lemke uh, from Super Troopers. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's their show, and it I don't I don't know what to say. It's funny as hell. Everybody on the show is funny. All the cast is super funny. The uh, 
they caught they caught the tone of the Super Troopers movie so well in this show. It's really weird because your first instinct is to go, well, it's two of the Super Troopers guys, so it's going to be what one sixth as funny <laughs> as the movie, right? But it's 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 perfectly fine. It's hilarious. It's the perfect it's tone. Hilarious. And, and then uh, and then thrown in so many other people, and you play the uh, not the uh, not the mayor, the, the city city council person. The city council person who yeah. basically is in charge of everything they do there. If they want money or whatever, they have to go through you. And the great thing, I, I don't know if you guys have watched it uh, in the episodes, but the great thing is Susie's character is a stiff just because she has to be, but in real life, she's not. So every once in a while, she'll something will slip out. Like in that episode where you were giving, a, you were uh, whatever, giving that press conference about the uh, the melted dildos and all that, yeah. and then you made that joke and everybody just stared at you and you're like, man, come on, <laughs> it was so great. And then Lemke gets up and he fucking kills with his dildo jokes and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> that, that was so great. And I think that's the great thing about the show. It has those relationships, just like in Super Troopers or any of those great workplace comedies. It's really, really funny. And you're in your second, you just finished your second season, is that right? Uh, yes. Well, no, uh, I, I finished, yeah, finished shooting the second season. It's still, uh, this half a season, I think, still has to air. Oh, right, because you did one season, but two parts? Uh, no. Well, we, yeah, they, we could, they think they had to stop uh, yeah, took airing break, parts right? of season two only because of the lockdown. Oh, okay. They can't. That, okay, well, that brings me to my next point, is we every week we talk about how people are, uh, basically using this new format and those guys have didn't fucking miss a beat after every episode now they do talk oma fd yeah and the, the two of them talk via zoom and uh answer questions and shit yeah and, and I, did, and, I did one yeah like it depends what the episode is but they'll have like the the cast member that was in that was highlighted or whatever uh i think mine was with eugene cordero the whole hysterical. cast is fantastic so funny and I, i'll say this about eugene cordero you know he's been on so many things in the past like you see his face and go oh i recognize that guy but he this is i think his big breakout thing he's really funny on this he, show yeah that uh, whole cast is i yeah. mean it's perfectly cast and everyone knows who that char their character is and they they work so well together those guys you can tell that they like each other it's a really <laughs> right? fun show to do you know, yeah. like it's relaxed and uh, and, and it, again, it, great guest stars. Uh, not just you, but Joe Pantoliano was on an episode the other day. That was fucking cool. I was uh, very excited to see him. So I think I think it's that's like a advantage that those guys have. Everybody wants to work with the fucking broken lizard guys, right? Yeah. So yeah, so that's a that's a plus. Can um, I say real quick, if anybody hasn't seen it, it's on True TV, right? That's the channel. Yes, True TV. So people should check that out. It's on True TV on your Yeah, case. and right afterwards, they do the Talk Oma show, which is good, because now they got another half hour uh, on, uh, on True TV. They got two shows out of it now. Good deal. Yeah, yeah, and they talk about, you know, behind the scenes stuff. They talk, and they have, you know, guests on Talk Oma. Uh, so it's sort of a, a jam-packed extra. It's like yeah. a DVD, at, D, DVD extras for every episode. <laughs> They're definitely taking advantage of uh, of being locked down. So Ever check that out. <laughs> Remember <Ever> those? <laughs> um. Now, one thing I wanted to say, um, I wanted to tell you guys when I when I was having that conversation with my wife, and she goes, "Is she going to talk? Is is Jim going to ask her about working with Hugh Laurie?" And I was like, "Hugh Laurie, uh, maybe we should ask her about working with Tom Selleck." Ed Asner, Martin Sheen, Rob Lowe, Michael Chiklis, Matthew Perry, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Dave Foley, or fucking Scott Bakula, for Christ's sake. Brian McNett. <laughs> <laughs> My point being, if you're a nerd like us, uh, uh, you know, and into pop culture, you've worked with some of the biggest and greatest names in television ever. In fact, I remember we had a conversation at uh, the screening of the Hello Junkie movie, Graham Elwood's Hello Junkie movie that yeah. Jim and I were in. We were sitting next to each other, and I hadn't seen you, and I was, and you had were just on the West Wing. The West Wing had just premiered the first season or, or second season, and I was like, "Hey, are you going to be on the West Wing again?" And you went, "No, I'm on another show now," and that was Daddy O. 
uh, Daddy-O had just premiered, and I was like, shit, she went from the West Wing to Daddy-O? God <laughs> damn it. What I was a good doing game. both for a while. I was doing both for a while because I was uh, I would do three episodes of Daddy-O, and then on my hiatus I would do West Wing. They were both on NBC, so they were. Oh, so it wasn't a problem. Yeah. So yeah, and obviously of- you were in you were in more episodes of Daddy-O than you were on the West Wing. Is uh, yeah. made more sense as a, a sitcom and all. But you worked and, and uh, the Tom Selleck and Ed Asner. Uh, for people who don't know, tell them about because that show, The Closer, is really an anomaly in television. It's a very strange thing. When Tom Selleck was on Friends, uh, everybody remembers he was so hilarious as Dr. Richard. And so like they did with Brooke Shields, NBC said, let's hurry and give Tom Selleck his own show. Although I think it was on CBS instead. Yes. yes. Yeah. So they said, let's give him his own, his own sitcom, which no one has ever done before or since, by <laughs> the way. Uh, but then they threw in all these funny people, including you, Ed Asner, um, Crumholtz. Crumholtz and uh, Penelope was it Pen- Ann Miller. And Penelope Ann Miller was the love interest. So it, that's, that's, and yeah. that says to me, that's a fucking gold mine right there. Uh, but it didn't go. Tell us about working on that show and what went on there. It was, the, you know what? Everything about it was great. Like the potential was great, but you could yeah. feel the pressure because oh. it was Tom Selleck's return to CBS. Not only that, it was Ed Asner's return to CBS. Oh, right. Yeah, he's on TV all the time now, but yeah, back then he had taken a long break. That's yes, right. Yes, and I remember when we when we were canceled, I think we did, I don't know, maybe a dozen episodes or something. When we were canceled, Ed Asner jokingly said, CBS has fucked me again. <laughs> Uh, he's the greatest. <laughs> he made us all laugh. He just made us all laugh with his fake uh, rage. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Tom Selleck didn't go back to TV until Blue Bloods. You're talking like 10 year break. Yeah. So, so that was huge. But was that a show? I mean, you obviously, I'm sure by that time you were, you were plenty jaded. But was that a show where you thought this might be it? I think we might, this might be it. You know what? I was very lucky in that one of the first pilots I've ever done, they told me this is gonna go for sure. And it never went. And that was one of the, that was really, really early on in my career. And so I never, never thought it would go, any show would go ever, including Avenue 5. And that's probably for the best because you're always pleasantly surprised. Yes, and I feel very lucky that that happened because I'm rarely, rarely disappointed. I mean, look, I'm, I would be so disappointed if Avenue 5, like, if we weren't able to do, like, season two or anything, but I mean... Through it, no fault of your own, yeah. It, yeah, it it's a happens. business, and it's it's completely out of my control, so yeah, what can you do? And yeah, I've seen friendships from the shows that were canceled, so I also feel like, you know, some good comes from even canceled projects. And you find that the Avenue of Five was inside of all of us all along, right? All along. Maybe the greatest journey we needed to take was within ourselves. <laughs> One time I saw Odenkirk on, uh, on The Daily Show back with Jon Stewart when um, Greater Call Saul was starting. Yeah. And, uh, and Stewart, Jon Stewart says to him, you know, you seem awfully calm for a guy who got his own show. And Bob goes, you know something, John? I've been disappointed so many times that I don't even know if this is a for sure thing. And I was like, holy fuck, right? He's on The Daily Show promoting what has become one of the best things on TV. And, and, but if that's not a Bob Odenkirk thing to say, I don't know what is. Uh, it's a very sure. Midwest thing, I think. <laughs> yeah, true. Bob told me the story about once when he, uh, when he was a kid, his dad drove him and his brother by the uh, Joliet State Prison and went, look, that's the Joliet State Prison. That's where you end up if you break the law. And Bob found out later on that his dad literally went out of his way to drive by. They weren't just on their way somewhere. No one goes to Mr. Joliet for no reason. Right? Mr. Odenkirk drove out of his way to drive his boys by the prison. It doesn't get much more Midwest than that. Oh, what a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, you want to talk, you want to uh, ask Susie about another great show she's on right now, Dead to Me which is, uh, again, <laughs> hilarious, and you're great on it. Yeah, um, I, I came on to that late. That would be a, oh, I, I need to do something during the quarantine so that I don't shoot myself in the mouth. Oh, hey, look at this. And it's great. You're great in it. What, how's, how's working on that show? Fuck. 
Christina Applegate. That's great. Well, that's, and that's perfect because that's a great show to binge if you haven't seen it because they're all on Netflix. You get, they're very short and they're all awesome. And then you can go right into the second season. Yeah, so, and it's really hard to stop after one episode or two episodes. So binging is just like, you, you cannot stop. You have On to the for stop. real. And yeah. again, this it's goes back to, back to the conversation we had about using the new medium. Obviously, this show is made for Netflix, so they know let's go ahead and put something every once in a while, let's put something crazy right at the end because people can immediately see what happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not without spoilers, but when James Marsters shows up in the second season, I was like, are you shitting me? What the fuck? And I, and I, I honestly said, if I wasn't able to watch this right now, I would be super pissed. And, <laughs> yes. And, yes. And that's the great thing about it. Um, how, what, uh, what are you up to in the series, Jim? How far have you gotten? Uh, Episode three. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, shit. So you know the premise anyways. Yes, I just started. What am I, what am I telling you? <laughs> so you don't know about Susie's character and her husband and everything that's going don't on next door. Don't say anything, Paul. Here's the problem. <laughs> and, I, and I think Tom knows this from Jim Bruce long time viewing. I've seen parts of a lot of other episodes too because my wife, has no courtesy in her. So <laughs> yeah. There's so I've seen a lot of stuff that I've gone, oh that's cool. Ah well I'll try to enjoy that when that happens. There's a lot of that for me. So but well, I do you was, this happens to me a lot. Do you often find yourself forgetting that you already knew it and then when it happens you go, oh right. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh I, I did know that was gonna happen. Like, everything's new to me. <laughs> yeah that happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. But that was good. I liked it. It was pretty cool. Um, tell us about working with Scott Bakula because you, you were on uh, Men of a Certain Age. Yes, I love that show. That was one of my favorite shows of all time. And you played, you were kind of a different role on that because you usually play a neurotic type of person. But in this case, uh, you seem to be, you seem to be a nice young lady who just wanted to be happy and through no fault of her own, kind of got the short end of the stick. Uh, and you also got to kiss Scott Bakula, right? I went to bed with him. Hello, let's talk about that. I I loved my character only because uh, she was an she was like a uh, a struggling actress in Los Los Angeles, <laughs> so it gave me sort of like this freedom. I'm, and now, here's the other thing, Paul. I never really get to play dumb character. I shouldn't say dumb, but you know what I'm saying. No, you yeah, you're. She yeah, was you kind of an idiot. She was a little bit of an idiot. And I found that so gratifying because I never, never get to do that. I'm always playing someone who's like in control or like, you know, at least, or at least, at least, at least trying to get gain control. And this, yeah. she was kind of a pothead too, which I love. <laughs> he was flaky. Yeah, I liked it because Men of a Certain Age was a very real show. It was very grounded in reality. Oh God, uh, I love that show. It was, was, you know, it was a true show. dramedy. And, and, you know, for me, who is a man of a certain age, obviously I, I got a lot out of the show. So the care, so your character was very real in the sense that like, you know, like you said, you're usually a neurotic person, but you're the person trying to be in control of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I made cookies, let's eat them. Everybody be quiet. So I have an announcement, shit like that. But in this case, you just were a young girl who didn't know what the fuck was going on and thought you were in love with Scott Bakula. And you were a little neurotic about that, but I thought it was really sweet and endearing because A, who's not gonna fall in love with Scott Bakula? Thank you. Right? Let me ask you a related question. So you got to do this cool sex scene with Scott Bakula. <laughs> Wait a minute. It was po post, it was post -coital. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, have you ever had the opportunity to do a sex scene with Dean Stockwell? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not oh yet. shit! She's still holding. Got fingers crossed. Still. Oh boy. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's move on to the trivia question, if we can. Um, last week's trivia question was about. Uh, we were talking about Silicon Valley, and I said there was a, a recurring character on that show who had been a guest on our show a million years ago. Uh, once again, two weeks in a row, nobody got it, and also nobody even bothered to answer. So, <laughs> uh, we're on a streak as far as that goes. Uh, but the answer is Henry Phillips. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with Henry Phillips. He played John on Silicon Valley, and he was a guest on our show a long time ago. So here's the question this week. Um, in addition to all the shows Susie has been on, you may not know, she does a lot of voiceover work as well. 
Uh, I remember going into my voiceover agent. I think we were both with CESD at the time. Uh, and there were, I walked and I, cause you could do uh, auditions right there at the agent's office. So I walked in and every young Asian woman in LA was there auditioning. Cause I think they were uh, doing auditions for the Mulan video game. Oh, <laughs> I, yes. Is what it was. So every young Asian woman in, in LA was there auditioning. And I was like, what, what, what is going on here? It was very weird until I found out what everyone was reading for. But you've done a lot of great voiceovers. So here's the question, uh, and um, don't answer it, because I'm sure you'll know it. But uh, Susie uh, once did an animated show where she worked with Bruce Willis, movie star Bruce Willis, who has not lent his voice to many animated programs. Uh, do you guys, either of you guys know the name of that show? Um, was it based on the Seagram's commercial? <laughs> Yes, it was called the Seagram's Wine Cooler Comedy Hour. That's right. Yep, that's it. That's the. <laughs> t t Tom, do you have any idea? Uh, was it the uh, uh, Moonlighting Babies <laughs> Saturday morning <laughs> cartoon? Uh, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Moonlighting good answer. Babies. My favorite was that little uh, little Agnes de Pesto. She was so cute. Uh, no, neither of those are correct. So uh, if you know the answer, write to Paul at the King of TV, and you will immediately get a message that that email no longer exists. So <laughs> then you should write to me uh, on Facebook or uh, get to me on Insta or any other place that you know and send me the answer and you might get a prize. Um, all right. Uh, uh, did you guys want to uh, ask Susie about anything that I might not have uh, done before we let her go to live her I, life? You, I think this might be true that you just finished or... I hopefully finished because we're in quarantine. A new movie that you're in? Sumo? I haven't started it yet. You haven't started it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, well, then tell us about your next project, hopefully. Yeah. Ho hopefully, if all goes well, my next project is a movie uh, produced by Armando Iannucci. It's a, it's, I would call it a sports comedy about, um, and it's called Sumo. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. And it's about a female sumo wrestler who, uh, and it's set in Torrance, California. <laughs> and, so uh, is, is this a Susie Nakamura vehicle? Yeah, but I, you know, like I, but there's a young kid who I, who I, who I want to teach sumo to. Okay. So it's, and it's, you know what, it's, it's, an, it's not like a Susie Nakamura, it's, I'm not starring, it's a, a, another ensemble. Oh, okay, good, all right. Yeah. My understanding is your character is a janitor, Yes. Just for sumo? Yes. Do you, so how did you, did you have to do janitor training? Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing janitor training. Um, I think, I don't know if there's a lot of uh, qualified teachers here in the United States. So I think they're looking, you know, there's internationally. Nothing, there's nothing worse than you watch a janitor on the TV or a movie and you think that fucking guy's never been a janitor. Yes. Look at the way he empties that waste can. Yeah. It could, yes. It could really, it just takes you out of the whole thing. That's right. It takes, so, takes you out of the moment. <laughs> right? He's not the guy. <clears throat> well, that, yeah, that looked awesome. I can't, I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, I, uh, I hope movies uh, are actually still made. I'm going to go watch the, I'm so hungry to watch movies. I'm going to go download the Scoob, the new Scooby-Doo movie and pay 20 bucks just so I can watch something new. I, I, I it's funny to me, movies are going to come back and regular movies. I was reading an article about all the stuff they're going to do to make shooting movies safe. And it's pretty funny because it's all the stuff porns have been doing for years. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. That's a hundred percent true. It's all these different tests where you're like, wow, oh, that, you know, what's funny is there's going to be a ton of actors who don't have Corona, but find out they had something else. Yeah, when their blood test comes back. Yeah, how, I mean, I think we would have to, what, quarantine for 14 days before we start production? Yeah. Probably. That's the only way to be sure, yeah. Yeah, like they're doing that with hockey. Like they're going to do like round robin sort of competitions where they take all the teams, quarantine them for 14 days, and then do it. So that's what you'll do with movies. Yeah. I'm supposed, I think to, record, I'm supposed to record a voiceover and uh some people have like home studios and i don't i you right. know like I, i'll send in auditions on my phone but for a project like a 
a proper show, they said they're going to sterilize the equipment. They're going to dro do a no contact drop off on my porch. <laughs> and then I, I pick it up and then they, they do a, a remote engineer session and then I leave the equipment on my porch and then they oh, come pick it up and they're going to come get it. Well, that's what they've been doing on The Voice and American Idol and all those shows too. They sent them all phones and ring lights and uh, so they could perform in their, in their houses. So that's, I, yeah, I think movies, my, my feeling is movies are going to be fine. Uh, they'll eventually come back slowly. And I mean, that's, there's enough money there that everything's going to work out fine. That's the bottom line. I think TV will change and in a way that we've already seen. It's changing using this format and more animated shows, obviously, are going to yeah. come around in the fall. That's going to be huge. So I'll tell you kids at home, work on your wacky voices. Or you'll that's end up in Joliet Prison. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take you for a ride. All right, you're our first guest. Uh, uh, back in this one. So let me, I'm going to ask all our guests, what are you doing during, uh, before we go, what are you doing during the quarantine to, uh, to make, to keep yourself sane or just to stay happy? I mean, to be honest, this isn't that much different than my regular life. Same, 100% same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I, oh, I have to take, this is a Chicago Bears jersey that I had to take down for Zoom meetings because <laughs> it was Cause branding. It, oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah, you can't show that Bears logo on TV or anything. Like, like, yeah, we I would totally get sued. Heavy. Well, it's a good thing you don't show it because Tom hates the Bears. He would have given you all kinds of shit for that. Tom, <laughs> it's, Dick, it's a Dick Buckus jersey. Oh, oh, well, all right. I mean, well, I guess he you loves gotta... He loves beer commercials, so that's okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, I ha I did. Oh, I took a. I've been taking like um, d exercise and dance classes via Instagram. Nice. I heard there's a lot of good like free uh, people do leading classes like live yes. and stuff, and it's good stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch it, but I heard it's great. <laughs> but I mean, it. You can take one at 10 a.m. You could take one at 6 p.m. And I take a. Like they do Facebook lives and they do private. I don't, I mean, I mean, I'm not that into it, but I mean, if I, if I was a, a real <laughs> proper dancer, I could get private coaching and I, it's just, I don't know. I think it, it made people really resourceful. And I think it also uh, allowed us to discover different ways, you know, that we could hold classes or meetings or, yeah, I agree. It's it sucks, obviously, that people are dying, and uh, I would certainly rather go outside than not. But uh, it certainly shook things up. I guess that's one promise that Trump kept. Day eh? he was going to shake things up. He fucking yeah. did it. All right, he's got my vote. All right. So uh, before we <laughs> before we go, uh, let's wrap it up. But uh, Susie, uh, uh, we end each show with Jim doing a mashup impression. He takes two impressions and he mashes them up in together into some sort of horrible pun so uh he's gonna do it for us and we're gonna try to guess what it is okay right i i want to preface this i like to let our people who haven't seen this before that one of the keys to this is it ain't good yeah <laughs> don't be don't expect to be entertained all right um okay oh it'll be good <laughs> all right welcome to the show everybody later on of course we'll have new rules uh, but first, I'd like to introduce my uh, guest. Uh, she's a commentator. She has her own website. She has a weird accent that somehow she's never shed. Please welcome my guest. It is, you know, Bill, it's great to be here. Oh, that's a perfect impression. Bill, it's so to be here. Uh, you know, I people call me a liberal, but you know, it is the people in Gryffindor are the ones that have killed the muggle. <laughs> We've never killed a muggle. You know, Raven's Claw, maybe. Sure, we are known for being dull, but you can depend on us. Maybe not the greatest wizards in our my house, but good, solid wizards that you Okay, can. I get it. Tom, I'm sure I'm sure you get it. I think, yeah, I think I got it. I, I was I was hoping it would be Ariana Huffing Paint, but it was <laughs> I was really hoping for that. Do you have any idea what it is, Susie? Uh, I, I was going to say, I was trying to merge Ariana Huffington with, but I, I, my, but my, um, Harry Potter references aren't that good. 
Yeah, he was talking about Harry Potter. One of the main houses there is Hufflepuff. It's Ariana Hufflepuff. So there you go. Ariana Hufflepuff. What would be some other ones? Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with, what are the other ones? Raven's Claw? Yeah, it'd be Raven. Slytherin? Yeah. Yeah. Ariana. I can't come up with any puns for that. Were you going to say Ariana Slytherin? Because that ain't even close. Yeah. <laughs> Why not Ariana, Ariana uh, Harrington? No, never mind. <laughs> like Schneider? <laughs> like she's Schneider? I want to see Ariana huffing paint. Do that. You know, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, unless anybody else has anything, Brian never showed up. And honestly, I think it was our best show ever. Yeah. <laughs> He's nailing it. He really yeah. Is. So uh, any plugs or anything before we wrap this up? Jim, you want to start? Um, no. <laughs> All right, that's my Tom. Bit. Tom, no, he took my you? bit. <laughs> you, that's yeah. my bit. I, I don't have plugs. Next time. It's my thing. Uh, so, Susie, people can still watch you on Tacoma FD. What else can they look for? Uh, binge season two of Dead to Me. Or, I mean, just binge Dead to Me. You can start. Yeah, like, new episodes of Dead to Me are on, so watch them all. Uh, oh, yeah. It is a, sure it's a very funny show. Three episodes. So there's at least three episodes. I know that. Yeah, you should continue <laughs> after the first three. That's my recommendation as a TV expert. Try to watch all of them beyond episode three. Yeah. That's what I would say. Keep going. Get is, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna binge the first three of everything. <laughs> that's actually a great idea for a podcast but you only watch the first three you never watch anymore yeah <laughs> three and out yeah that's the name it's called three and out yeah. all right that is the show Susie. thank you so much for doing this it's very nice of you uh for those of you who are listening to this if you want to watch the video go to jim's youtube page or go to my twitch channel which is twitch.tv the king otv you can yep. watch a video of it. Uh, once again, Susie, thank you for being here. Brian, thank you for so not. <laughs> Everybody else, uh, we're going to go fuck ourselves. Good night. Susie, that was so great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>